Guys, I'll let you into a little secret here. I may... Control the player! Yep, I know. It's disgraceful. The inferior graphics, the aim assist... The very, very questionable in-game chat discussions. What the hell is with your voice? Your mom's voice. Oh it's all something that I have experienced for far too long. Yeah, I hope to join you PC lot someday, but for now, due to my bank account being extra dry, I can only game on this. It was just a bad dream. If by any chance you don't know what this is, it's an Xbox Series S and it seems to be missing something. Yes, that is correct. It has no bloody disc thing. And for that reason, it struggles very much in playing games that are not on an old fashioned disc. So because of this, it's probably easier purchasing a digital version of the game that you require. Oh, the, the signal strength is through the roof. Where did you say you got this? Pack the National Military Air Guard frequency in less than a minute. But again, there is another You're problem. Joking. Not another one? And I literally do not know why this is still the case, but it seems like some games on the Xbox Digital Marketplace will literally stay the same price as they did when they came out. Like literally your currency could hit rock bottom and still Microsoft will be like, yeah, nah, 90 quid for Call of Duty seems quite fair. A game that came out almost a decade ago. Just a bit of fraud. You know, a friendly kind of crime. I mean, it's true that you can get some games on a sale, but personally, there usually isn't anything that tickles my fancy too much. So I am really only left with one choice. That choice being buying the Xbox Game Pass. It's time to snap! For a small fee, you get games. Quite a lot of games, to be fair. As well as games, you get the gold membership, which basically allows you to play online. Which, by the way, is still a thing that annoys me till this day, that you have to have a monthly subscription to basically play multiplayer. But anyways, you also get some rather irrelevant stuff, but the main thing is that supposedly all your problems are fixed. You no longer have to worry about expensive digital downloads or purchasing a gold subscription because the Game Pass has your back. Hey bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! However, what I've noticed is that there is also a dark side to this pass of games. Now, this might not necessarily be the first thing you may think of when the word scam is used, but that does not mean that you shouldn't be aware of it. Basically, what I'm on about is that the whole business model of the Game Pass works on the idea that you're under an illusion of choice. An illusion of choice is quite self-explanatory, but in the context of the Game Pass, it hides itself rather well. First of all, when you are deciding whether to buy the Game Pass, you are bombarded with the idea that the Game Pass holds over 100 games, which is true, but you have to ask yourself why those games specifically, and are you actually going to get through all those games in a set amount of time? I mean, I usually find myself scrolling through the plethora of games, but there tends to be a common theme among them. The games offered are usually games that are not popular anymore or created by small developers. That's not to say that every game offered is like this, and also I'm not trying to say that this is a bad thing either. In fact, it's a brilliant way of finding games that you have never played before. However, the point I'm trying to make here is that perhaps this is not the best way of expanding your horizon into new games, as the games offered by the Game Pass are naturally reducing your choices down to the games that Microsoft thinks you should be playing. This means that although you have over a hundred games to choose from, you have to remember that you are choosing from an already chosen platter of games. Singapore rice noodle, curry sauce. Secondly, let's be real here. You won't go through all of the games offered to you. Each game is basically over 30 gigabytes, and I don't know about you, but my Wi-Fi is so slow that it would literally take all day to download. Plus, the Xbox Series S doesn't have that much space on it, unless you get more storage for it, but again, that is another expense that Microsoft will be profiting from. So if you plan on trying out the Games Pass for a month or so, it'll be very unlikely for you to even properly play 10 or more games. So really, you would only be utilizing around 10% of the possible choices you have. This illusion of choice is really one of the main reasons why I see the Game Pass as a scam. It's a clever way of misleading the consumer into thinking that they have more than they actually have, and I guess in that way, it is a form of a dishonest scheme. However, you may disagree, and if you do, I would love to hear what you make of this. 
Yet with all this well more or less negative stuff about the Game Pass, I have to unfortunately admit that there doesn't seem to be much of a better alternative out there. To give it to Microsoft, they have not only engineered their hardware to fit this streamlined Game Pass business model, but also their software. Basically putting the consumer in a position where they have no other option but to purchase the Game Pass. By making the Xbox Series S with no disk space, keeping prices high of digital downloads, and offering a service where a customer can enjoy a wide range of games for a monthly fee, Microsoft have done something to the gaming industry, which I think is here to stay for a very, very long time.